Jalen Brunson has risen the New York Knicks out the ashes and the graveyard that it has been for a very, very, very long time. The last time the New York Knicks has been this good was when they had Carmelo Anthony, and that was quite a while ago. But Jalen Brunson has kind of shown that he is that player for them. And he came from Dallas where he was the number two option for Luka Doncic. And so when he came to New York, you know, not many people had a lot of expectations for him to be the number one option or even to be a consistent option for them to even win basketball games. But the reality is that everybody was wrong. Everybody did not see the writing on the wall that the New York Knicks actually had a lot of talent on the team that just so happens to work with Jalen Brunson. Now there's a few things on this team that definitely does not work in his favor, but he still kind of makes things work. But I'll get to that in the later part of the video. But Jalen Brunson is one of those point guards who has pretty much everything right now where he's a big stocky point guard and so he's able to kind of like be quick as well as being a post player which you usually don't see a lot as as guards tend to be more so of a slasher or just spot up shooter and so to have a guard that is skilled within the post and be able to dominate in the mid range or at least five feet out the rim you're really starting to see that there's a lot of magic here and the new york knicks have enough shooting to give him at least more space than he would have had any other way and so he's given the keys to the offense. He's averaging around 27 points. This is easily his best season. And the New York Knicks would not be anywhere near the level that they're at right now without making this huge acquisition. Now, right now, the New York Knicks are in perfect position to take over the East because right now you have the Milwaukee Bucks who have been a dumpster fire. I mean, listen, you fire your coach midway through the season i understand the firing but you have to hit it on all cylinders when it comes to coaching and it's very difficult when you have to tell the new coach that hey not only do you have to teach the whole system that you want to implement to the team midway through the season but you also have to win games at the same time it's a very impossible thing to do and listen as much as i have gotten on doc rivers for being a terrible coach and listen he still kind of is it's really not his fault that he has been flushed into this situation where he has to win games while actually teaching the team how to play in the system that he wants to play. Now, other people will say, listen, it still is his fault because he did take the job and he did not need to take the job. And I can understand it too. But right now, you can see that there's a lot of turmoil right now. Joel Embiid might be out for a good like four to six weeks. We don't know when exactly he's going to be back. The Indiana Pacers, who have been a pretty decent team this season, has always struggled with defense and so they have kind of teetered around the fourth and fifth spot while everybody else including the miami heat the magic the bulls even the hawks is just they're they're just not in a good position right now the strongest team who's always been the strongest team is the boston celtics and we even have a sneaky and we even have a sneaky cavaliers team who is trying to make a little bit of noise but the new york knicks has consistently been that team where they have been consistent from the jump even after they've been a little bit rocky since the jump, but they've been consistent ever since. They have kind of changed out the roles of how they want their players to play. Now, Jalen Brunson is the motor of the team. He does drive the team, but there's only one person who is the dynamic wild card of the team that can either win you games or lose you games. And we already know who that is, and that is Julius Randle. Julius Randle is one of those players who, honestly, in my opinion, is weird that he's still being allowed to have this lackluster or the prima donna of not getting the ball and so you're not going to try or things not going your way so you're not going to try while being on coach Tom Thibodeau's team who is known for getting on his players and whipping them into shape, basically. I mean, if you're a Bulls fan, you already know what I'm talking about. But Julius Randle is one of those players where if he's on, he's on. If he's off, he's absolutely off. And right now they're turning down his usage rate because they realize finally that he's not that great of a post-up player, even though that's the one thing that he should know how to do and be consistent in. He simply is, just, is not that good of a post-up player. And then, so they're now having him to have a little bit less touches on the offense and flowing things a lot more through Jalen Brunson, which is exactly what you want to do. But Julius Randle is still a big key in that offense. And he's going to have to prove to everybody that he can be a consistent player and a player that shows up in the playoffs when it really, really counts and when it really, really matters. We have seen time and time again that he kind of falters off on the wayside. But the good thing about the Knicks is that, you know, even if he has a bad game and, you know, Jalen Brunson is still having a pretty good game, the team is actually pretty good and well constructed. 
You have Josh Hart, who has been a great addition to the team. DiVincenzo is a great shooter to the team. OG Ananobi, which has been a great acquisition from the Toronto Raptors, as the Toronto Raptors are slowly destroying their team. You're seeing that this team is kind of slowly figuring it out. And credits to Tom Thibodeau, because this is a very difficult situation to deal with, with the Knicks being consistently a very bad team. He didn't really have a great season last year, and that's probably in due part because of Julius Randle not understanding his role in the team and not really getting the fact that he's a very inefficient player, and so he needs to kind of slow things down and then simplify his offense. But also having effort on defense, we can talk about Julius Randle and his lackluster effort on night in and night out basis. But this team with a better roster construction and not having to rely on Julius Randle as much as they used to in the past is allowing them to win more games right now. And one of the things that I always like to look at when it comes to whether figuring out whether the team is a really good team and if they are actually going to be sustainable all the way to the playoffs is the fact that I always look at their offensive and defensive rating and their top six, top seven in both which is something that you should always be happy to see, especially if you're a New York Knicks fan, because that pretty much shows you that, listen, they have a pretty good offense. Their offense can work. And even when it doesn't work, their defense is right there to keep them in the game. And that is exactly why they're tied third or tied fourth in the East right now and making their rise to be one of probably the second best team in the East while you have, you know, Joel and beat out. And there's really not much else in the East that you should really be afraid of. But the one major issue that I'm seeing on this team is the fact that their shooting has been a little bit streaky. Right now they're 14th and three point field goal percentage. So that kind of shows that they're just basically average, but you can't really rely on that when it comes to the playoffs. And even though their three point attempts is not necessarily the highest either, they're, they're ranked 13th. And so the reason why this is really important to me is because that allows more space for Jalen Brunson to kind of work and get down into action. If he does not have that spacing, which we have seen multiple times before, and that's why he typically runs around the court for a very long time. His usage rate is really high, and also he just goes, he, he tracks everywhere on the court. He's everywhere on the court because he always tries to find the space. And even with the limited amount of space that he has, he pretty much makes a really good decision and always scores consistently. His game is fairly, fairly simple. Because he's strong, he can back you down in the post, and he also has a really good shot. He's, he's pretty much a three-level threat player. But when it comes to the playoffs, this is what is actually going to be very tricky for Jalen Brunson and the New York Knicks, is the fact that when you don't have a lot of space and you're allowing teams to scheme for your offense a little bit differently than you would have seen in the regular season, you start to see that having poor spacing and having not that many great shooters on the court will basically dumb down your offense and place a lot of pressure on Jalen Brunson to be a prolific scorer. If I was a team going against him in a seven game series, I would have to literally tell my team, Jalen Brunson is going to be the guy that's going to have to score a majority of their points. Will help because they don't have that many great three point shooters on the, on the perimeter. And that is something that we're gonna live and die on because Jalen Brunson beating us is something that you should really not rely on if you're the New York Knicks. And I think this is something that they're already trying to address, and that's why they've gotten on that huge winning streak and is still winning a lot of games today. But they need to become a way better three-point shooting team in order for them to be consistent in the playoffs and to win games in the playoffs. But outside of that, right, before we even get into the playoffs, of course, we have to still take account that Jalen Brunson has completely changed and revitalized the Knicks as a franchise. And this is a player who not many people think that he was even going to do that. And to be fair, I completely understand. I mean, he was a bucket, a go-getter in Dallas. But could you really say that he was the player that could lead a franchise that he is leading right now? No. I think with a lot of people had their reservations, their assumptions, their anxieties on his play and whether or not he could be the one guy, the star in New York, it made sense. And that just goes to show you that everybody in the NBA are hoopers certified buckets and if you give them chances if you give them opportunities we saw that in dallas if you gave him opportunities he's going to be a great player and he's consistently have done a good job in the in the clutch and so as much worry that i have for the new york knicks in the playoffs that is null and void to how much excitement Jalen Brunson has brought to New York, a city that desperately needed something to root for because they've always rooted for a lot of teams in the past. And just like the Chicago Bulls, they never really amounted to anything. And so for the New York Knicks to actually have a legitimate chance to make it to the Eastern Conference final, 
this is probably the best season for Jalen Brunson to show that he is not just an all-star, but a superstar.